Oh man, this is something that I think a lot of us saw coming. The rustification of Ubuntu is causing a lot of strange bugs in the distro, everything from breaking executable programs to causing automatic updates to stop working altogether. This all started back in March when one of Canonical's lead engineers talked about the plans to engineer Ubuntu for the next 20 years. And it makes sense, you know, over time, best practices change, whether we're talking about programming techniques or building codes, but you can be proactive, especially with software, because it's much easier to change, and try to future-proof your design for the next couple of decades. And of course, one of the big trends in software right now is to have either entire programs or large parts of your system be written in Rust. And some of this has already taken place in the Linux ecosystem and come from upstream via the kernel. There's already a couple of drivers that have been written in Rust, and unless your distro maintainers are going out of their way to exclude those Rust parts, or maybe you're just using a much older LTS kernel, then the oxidization of your Linux system has already begun. But Ubuntu is taking things a bit further. They put the rusty stuff right in the GNU. In fact, they completely replaced their core utilities like CP, LS, CAT, CHMOD with UUtils, which is a rewrite in memory safe Rust of those original GNU core utils that were written in C. And for the most part, you would think that this is a good thing, especially when there's no real performance trade-off that I'm aware of. UUtils might actually be a bit faster, especially in multi-threaded environments, which is pretty much every computer these days. And of course, there's going to be some compatibility issues, which we're going to talk about more in a bit. But the biggest problem with UUtils becoming a standard replacement for GNU in GNU Linux is the software license. And I don't see enough people talking about that. So essentially the MIT license that UUtil ships with does not prevent a corporate takeover of the code. So Microsoft or some other big tech company could make a proprietary addition to UUtils. They could fork it and maybe make it 10% better, but they wouldn't be required to share the code for those changes like they would have to if it was GPL license. And if a company starts making a better proprietary version of UUtils, maybe they do some extensive testing and they find more of these edge case issues where UUtils does not work as expected and they patch all of those bugs in order to you know, keep systems that are using that code from crashing. If they manage to do that, then Ubuntu and other distro maintainers might just start shipping those closed source binaries either pre-installed onto the system or as a recommended addition, just like they do now with proprietary drivers for things like Wi-Fi and graphics cards. And those core utilities, they're so fundamental. Literally every Linux distro has them uh, in some form. I mean, a few use BusyBox instead, like Alpine Linux, which mostly works the same, but just has fewer command line options than GNU. And of course, we're written by different people. But basically, if the UUtils project ends up going too well, then we could actually see Libre Linux, fully free and open source distributions, just kind of fall into complete obscurity. But besides the ethical issues with licenses that don't protect software freedom in fundamental system components, this software swap from GNU to UUtils has been causing technical problems as well. And obviously those are the ones that cause the biggest, most apparent headaches. Uh, so the most severe one to date is the problem with the UUtils date command and how it handles file modification timestamps incorrectly. I believe it actually just prints the current time instead of the last time that a file was modified. And this issue caused automatic or unattended updates in Ubuntu to fail. And the reason I consider this to be a big deal is because of how it would affect people who are running Ubuntu's servers specifically. Uh, so I know I talk a lot about the Linux desktop, but servers are really where Linux dominates, right? And Ubuntu specifically is one of the more popular distros for running servers, and there's actually a bit of a feedback loop um, that's making it more and more popular because if you've ever read official documentation for setting up software on a developer's website or on a third-party resource, more often than not, they recommend that you run that software on Ubuntu. Ubuntu was the distro that the software was tested on, maybe also developed on, and there's basically no warranty or any guarantees that the software will work unless you're using Ubuntu or maybe Debian or Red Hat, you know, something that's 
fairly similar running systemd apt and all that good stuff. Um, and a lot of hosting companies as well, like DigitalOcean or Volter, they have these pre-set up appliances for, like let's say you wanna set up a server that's running WooCommerce, like base.win or Django or any other you know, software stack. Uh, they have automated scripts that actually run the setup for all of that software that you need to get that website started. Um, and more often than not, those scripts are going to set up your software stack on a server that's running Ubuntu. So you have this downstream issue that can end up affecting a lot of people. And luckily the UUtils experiment is not supposed to be pushed to any LTS Ubuntu distro until all of the bugs are worked out. But how are we ever gonna know when all the bugs are truly worked out? You've got to imagine that there's nearly infinite edge cases that you could run into for every single shell script that's out there or every program that's gonna call on these core utils. And people point to the GNU test suite compatibility uh, with UUtils and see that UUtils is indeed passing more and more tests. You know, most of the time, if you're running UUtils, um, even at this point, I would say it's probably gonna be a drop in replacement. But again, we are still going to run into some of these edge cases like we had with unattended updates in Ubuntu. Uh, but the other thing to keep in mind just with the test suite is that even the test suite itself is incomplete. They literally had to add more tests to the test suite for the date command in order to try and catch this kind of bug in the future. And the deeper problem with UUtils is that it accepts pretty much all of the GNU core util flags by default, even if the functionality for them has not been implemented yet. If we actually look at the docs for UUtils, we can see that the lowercase r flag is still missing. So this is basically the core of the issue. Again, instead of um, using date r like you would with GNU core utils, and then you get the timestamp of a reference file, you know, a file that you're passing into the date command. Um, the UUtils one just gave you the current timestamp. So obviously that would cause an error with things like unattended upgrades. Uh, if you're seeing, trying to see that a file is old, but instead it's giving you just the current system timestamp. Uh, but anyway, I believe that that feature has now been added to UUtils, um, but it's still not documented yet. But if you manually updated your Ubuntu in the past week, you should be okay and now uh, have a working date program on your system. And if you've never run a remote system before, you might not fully appreciate the importance of these unattended upgrades or unattended updates. They're so important because pretty much every week there's gonna be a critical security update and you don't want to have to manually SSH into all of these remote boxes just to run apt update like you might on your own desktop at home. Uh, you just wanna let maintenance scripts run and then they'll output a pass fail to a central log somewhere. You check that and then if any boxes need manual intervention, then that's when you SSH into them and manually intervene. And another angle with uh, unattended updates is that if you're gonna have an outage on your web server or perhaps the site might just have some performance update uh, or performance issues while it's updating, you want to run that, like you wanna run your automatic updates during low traffic hours, probably when you're asleep, if you're primarily serving a demographic in the same hemisphere as you, because they're gonna be asleep too. Uh, so yeah, you don't want to have to deal with that, you know, getting up at odd hours of the night to update your boxes. You just want that to go on automatically. So if you're running uh, one of these Ubuntu 25.10 servers or an Ubuntu desktop, then you're gonna have to manually apt update uh, the Rust core utils package to get the patch date program. And then you should be able to carry on with your rusty Ubuntu system until the next bug is inevitably found. If you enjoyed this video, please like and share it to hack the algorithm and check out my online store, base.win, where you can buy my awesome merch like this Linux Libre t-shirt or accessories for your phone or laptop. 10% store-wide discount when you pay with Monero XMR at checkout. Have a great rest of your day.